Hello everyone and welcome to the first video on what's going to be a very long series in how to use RenPy. So if you're here you probably know what RenPy is but I'm going to give a very brief rundown. A RenPy is a video game engine for producing uh, visual novels. Um, so it's based on the Python programming language and it's kind of a programming language in and of itself um, where it uses a, a Python syntax as a base. So don't let the term programming language uh, intimidate you or put you off from this. It's incredibly easy to use at the basic level and even some of the advanced techniques are relatively easy uh, if, you, if you learn them the right way, which hopefully I'll help you do. Um, all a programming language is, is just a set of instructions. And we're going to go through this very, very slowly, just one step at a time, and show you the instructions that you need uh, in order to make your very own visual novel using RenPy. So if you haven't downloaded RenPy yet, I'm not going to go through the uh, the full installation, but uh, right here I have the um, the website page. It's RenPy, R-E-N-P-Y dot org. Um, and just go to the uh, latest download section, Download whatever the latest SDK is. SDK is the Software Development Kit, and just download the one for your preferred operating system. And one thing I will say is that I use the Atom Editor uh, for Windows, so be sure you download that with it as well. Um, that's uh, I've used a couple of different editors. That one is by far my favorite one, and it's multi-platform. You can use it for Windows, Macs, uh, for, I'm sorry, for Windows, Mac, or Linux. So uh, once you have uh, RenPy SDK and the Atom Editor downloaded, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So the first time you start up RenPy, it should look something like this. Um, you'll probably only have two projects on the left under the Projects pane, Tutorial, and the Question. Uh, these are three other projects that I've created that I'm working on. Uh, and that's where your projects will appear when you create them. So we don't really have to know what all this other stuff is just yet. All we have to do is click on Create New Project, and then hit Continue, and then put in a name. I'm going to call this YouTube Tutorials. That's what we're doing. And then hit Continue. If you aren't satisfied with your name, you can always change it later, so don't you, you won't be married to it. And I like to do 1920 by 1080 resolution. So I'm going to select that and then hit continue. All right, and after that, you can select your accent and background colors. Again, you don't have to be married to this. You can, uh, you can always change this later. But uh, pick something you think you'll be satisfied with. I really like black and purple, so I'm going to go with that one. When you've got that set, hit continue. And then it'll take just a moment for it to uh, create all the files for your new project. There we go. So now you have your new project on the left. Mine is called YouTube Tutorials. And if you hit Launch Project, then it will actually start the game. There we go. Sorry, mine started on my other monitor. There we go. This is what the start screen looks like. Very, very boring right now, but it is kind of, sort of, a game. Uh, you've got Start, Load, Preferences, About, Help, and Quit, all of your options on the left. You've got the name of your uh, game there on the bottom right, followed by the version 1.0. All of this stuff is customizable, as we'll see later on, but we're going to leave most of it alone for now. But the uh, menus by default are fully functional, so you can click any of those, and they will work for you. We can even click Load, but we don't have any saved games. All right, so if you click Start, um, it immediately goes into the game into a dialogue. We don't have any graphics in it right now, so everything is using just blank placeholder graphics. And then you can either close the window or you can hit Quit, and it'll quit the game. All right, and if you want to peek under the hood and see what makes everything work, um, we're going to go under Edit File, and we're going to go to Script.RPY. All of the files that we're going to use for the game, most of the files we're going to use for the game, uh, use the file extension .rpy, which is a RenPy script file. Those are the sets of uh, programming instructions that tell the game how to behave. So first we're going to go to script.rpy. That is the main game file. There we go. And yeah, script.rpy is the main game file that, um, that tells the game basically just what to do. Um, and we'll notice a couple of things. Uh, so again, don't get intimidated. We're gonna, uh, I'm gonna show you what everything means here. So if we focus first of all on label start, 
Um, a label is just a section of the game that you can call whenever you want. Label, start, that's the beginning of the game. So whenever you hit the start button on the game, this is where it goes. Um, we've got a scene, uh, and then it shows the character, and then we go immediately into dialogue. So the first thing that I'm going to do is show you how to define a character. So up at the top, um, we see a line of code that says define E equals character parentheses and then the name Eileen in quotations and then in parentheses. This is how you define a character in the game. Um, so you start with the keyword define. So I'm going to show you how to do another one real quick. So we'll go define. And they, in all of the examples, they use single letters. I really don't like to do that, especially if your character roster starts to grow. I like to use full character names, but you can abbreviate them. You can name them anything you want. It could just be a random string of letters and that'll totally work. I highly advise against that. But, uh, but again, you can name it anything. So I'm gonna name this one Steven equals character parentheses Steven. There we go. So make sure that all of that uh, syntax is correct. The syntax is just the order that all of the symbols occur. So you have to say define and then put in the name equals character with a capital C and then the name in quotation marks and all of that inside parentheses is how you define a character. And then in order to make that character say something all you have to do is we're going to go down here under label and type in the name of the character space and whatever you want him to say in the quotes just like that and you can either use single quotes or double quotes so i could use but they have to match up so if you, you start with a double quote it has to end with a double quote if you start with a single it has to end with a single but there we go so now i'm going to save that by hitting Control s all right, so now if I just minimize this window and go back to my game, uh, hit launch project. So now when I go to start, we have this line beginning. Hi, my name is Steven, like, just like we inserted. So that's how you define a character and do dialogue. And the next thing I'm gonna do is show you how to customize your character with a custom color. And to do that, we're going to use something called uh, color code hexadecimals, or uh, just HTML color codes. So if we go to, there we go. So if we go back to our uh, browser window, and I'm going to htmlcolorcodes.com. And this has a color picker. So it's really easy. Um, you can just scroll through that, pick whatever color you want. Like if I wanted to do red, and then it gives you this hexadecimal. It's just a six uh, digit number and letter code. We're just gonna right click that and say copy. And then we're gonna come back to our uh, script file. And we're just gonna enter another snippet after our name. So after your name is defined, inside the parentheses, we're gonna say comma, color, lowercase, equals, and then our color code in parentheses and then save. So it's very important that you save it before you load your game, otherwise it won't reflect the changes. So after we've got that saved, we're gonna pull our game back up, launch project. There we go, then when we launch the project and go to start, now Steven's name is going to appear in red. And Eileen's is still in purple. So every character that you create can have a different uh, can have a different color style for their name. Uh, later on, we'll look how to and how to do fonts and other customization. But I think that will do it for right now. So that covers defining characters and then doing dialogue. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below, and I'll take a look at it. And in the meantime, hit the like button and subscribe for more great content. Um, which I will have coming out very shortly. And that will do it for this one. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.